Hi, I'm Regina Dunn, and I want to talk to you about how I find inspiration and how I use it. One of my main sources of inspiration is my own backyard. This is a view from outside my patio, and when I look out there, I don't just see trees and leaves and vines. I see processes and changes happening. I see how one life form supports another life form. And I try to see the many transformations that are taking place. One of the ways that I use this inspiration is not to reproduce the image exactly as it appears, but instead I try to use it to express a concept or an idea. And in this photo, I'm showing how I sketched my favorite tree from the yard and reproduced it as a ghost image so that shows more of the idea of the tree than the actual tree itself. I wanted to try and express how the tree might have been in the past, how it exists in the present, and how it might be in the future all at the same time. I wonder after it's gone, what might be in its place that wouldn't have been there if the tree never existed. So in essence, I was trying to express time passing and how the tree is influencing the things around it as it goes through its life cycle. Another thing I notice in nature are sounds. In this artwork, I tried to reproduce the memory of when I got caught in a downpour in the jungle under a tin roof. And I was trying to capture the sound of the rain in the imagery on this one. But not only do I find inspiration in natural life forms, but also in man-made items. Once when I was in Panama sitting in a small restaurant looking at a screen door, I noticed a hole in the door and I began to admire the shapes and the lines and I fell in love with them. I pondered about how people touching it over the years helped form them, how the weather affected it, how chemical reactions took place to create those holes. And so to celebrate and honor the screen door, I created an out artwork called Screen Door with a View. And it represents the door's memory and the door's view of how it became what it is now. Inspiration can even come from objects you see every day and usually ignore. For example, this shell that hangs from a curtain in my window has turned out to be an inspiration for many of my artworks. One day I noticed the warm colors on the left and the cool colors on the right, and I could imagine a female dancer in the center. So while I had the image in my mind, I did a painting of it on a piece of paper. And then I gathered fabrics together and I painted a piece of crinoline to use as a support for it. I cut the fabrics and started to fuse them to the crinoline. Here's the piece that resulted from it. I call it Inner Balance One. And it's about how we have two sides to us, an emotional side and a logic side. And in the warm colors on the left, I represented our emotional side. And in the cool colors on the right, I represented the logic side. But a funny thing happened when I was making it. The painted crinoline fell on the floor upside down. And on the reverse side of it, I was amazed at the patterns it formed from how the paint had seeped through the crinoline unevenly. And I knew that this piece of crinoline was going to be buried inside the quilt sandwich, never to be seen. So I took a photo of it, and I sent it off to a company to reproduce the patterns and the colors onto cotton. One of the cotton pieces returned to me from that company is shown here. So I pinned it to my design wall, and I assembled some of the other fabrics 
that were also reproduced onto cotton to form a composition. And here's the final artwork that resulted from it, and I call it Inner Balance II. It represents how women can take the chaos around them and focus it to create a productive and satisfying life. But that shell continued to influence me. Here's the back side of the shell. And when I saw this, I saw a crescent moon shape. So I took the photo of it and processed it in Photoshop and had a Thermofax screen made of it. And I used this image to represent time passing. And it's been used in a whole series of artwork. One day when I was searching for inspiration, I decided to clean out my studio and use some of my energy there. And I found this bag of leaves. It's from when my mother sent it to me years before, when I'd asked her to send me some autumn leaves, because I live in a climate that doesn't have any. And when the bag arrived, they were brightly colored in all the autumn colors. They were gorgeous. But I couldn't think of a way to use them. So I put them away and forgot about them. But when I was cleaning out my studio that day, I rediscovered them. And it had been several years since my mother had passed away. And I decided it was time that they should be used. So I put paint on them and I printed with them and I tried to grasp their images before they decayed all the way. As I was doing that, it struck me that the image of a decaying leaf could also represent a leaf that was just forming from stray pieces coming together. And at that point, the inspiration hit me to use the image of the leaf as a metaphor for changes we all experience. I was really excited about that, and I want to delve deeper into it. So to get that concept going, I printed a leaf in my sketchbook, along with some other images, and then I began to free associate words and phrases to help guide me in how to express the idea about changes. I even took photos of plants in my yard, including roots, so that I could use them as symbols later on. And I used those images to make tools such as stencils, stamps, and thermofax screens. Then I began to dye fabrics and fuse them together to create backgrounds that would have patterns to feed the imagery that I wanted. I began to layer on the imagery. In this one I started with the root. And then the planet shapes to indicate time passing. I wanted to create a flow of leaves across it to show how one life form can influence another. And so gradually I began to place those leaves and print them on. Once I felt that the composition was complete, I fused it to felt and began hand stitching. I kept spaces between some of the stitches to represent energy flowing in and out as the life forms underwent their transformations. And here's the finished piece. I titled it Root Memory to express the idea that we can use our past foundations to find future pathways to help us move forward. When all was said and done with the leaves, I had created seven large pieces and 24 small collages. This installation photo shows some of them together. The large ones I called the Transformation Series, and the small collages I called Little Transformations. One of the large ones, called Letting Go, got juried into an installation of art-covered utility boxes. My piece was reproduced on vinyl and wrapped around the utility box at one of the main intersections downtown. This gave me great joy and helped to validate the meaning of my work. So, in conclusion, 
you can find inspirations if you look deeply at all sorts of things to help find the hidden messages that are hidden all around you. And you'll be surprised at what doors open and what gets revealed inside. Thank you for taking some of your time to spend with me today. I hope you enjoyed it.